Hey guys, I'm reporting to you live from bed, and I am remaking the post-normal science video for you guys so that you can learn a little bit more about the concept and not have to sit through the terrible video. <laughs> Disclaimer, all of this information is straight from Wikipedia, so none of this information is my own words. So, post-normal science, which is also referred to as PNS, is a novel approach for the use of science on issues where facts are uncertain, values are in dispute, and stakes are high and decisions urgent. PNS as a theory was developed in the 1990s by Silvio Funktowitz and Jerome R. Rivet. Considered as a reaction to the styles of analysis based on risk and cost-benefit analysis prevailing at that time, and as an embodiment of concepts of a new critical science developed in previous works by the same authors. In a more recent work, PNS is described as the stage where we are today, where all the comfortable assumptions about science, its production and its use are in question. In 1962, Thomas Kuhn's The Structure of Scientific Revolutions introduced the concept of normal science as part of his theory that scientific knowledge progresses through socially constructed paradigm shifts, where normal science is what most scientists do all the time, and what all scientists do most of the time. Paradigm shift is essentially as follows. From normal science, the rules are agreed upon or disagreed upon in debates that cannot be concluded. Science is puzzle solving, but some contradictions in theory cannot be resolved. From normal science, we move to revolutionary science where important rules are called into question and contradictions may be resolved, but paradigms are shifting. Here we are introduced to new normal science, where new rules are accepted and science returns to puzzle solving under new rules. Physicist and policy advisor James J. K. described post-normal science as a process that recognizes the potential for gaps in knowledge an understanding that cannot be resolved in ways other than revolutionary science. Argued that between revolutions, one should not necessarily attempt to resolve or dismiss contradictory perspectives of the world, whether they are based on science or not, but instead incorporate multiple viewpoints into the same problem-solving process. At birth, post-normal science was conceived as an inclusive set of robust insights, more than as an exclusive, fully structured theory or field of practice. Some of the ideas underpinning PNS can already be found in a work published in 1983 and entitled Three Types of Risk Assessment, a Methodological Analysis. This and subsequent works show that PNS concentrates on few aspects of the complex relation between science and policy. This theory is illustrated by its well-known quadrant rainbow with three zones. The two axes are, respectively, system uncertainties and decision stakes. Three quarter circular zones are, respectively, applied science, professional consultancy, and post-normal science. Different standards of quality and styles of analysis are appropriate to different regions in the diagram. Post-normal science does not claim relevance and cognacy on all of science's application, but only on those defined by the PNS's mantra, and that is, as previously stated, Facts uncertain, values in dispute, stakes high, and decisions urgent. I repeated that, so it's obviously an important aspect. Today, post-normal science is intended as applicable to most instances where the use of evidence is contested due to different norms and values. This is a really big reason why post-normal science is spoken about so much in environmental studies. Uh, so for Peter Gluckman, who's the chief science advisor to the Prime Minister of New Zealand, post-normal science approaches are today appropriate for a host of problems, including and not limited to eradication of exogenous pests, offshore oil prospecting, legalization of recreational psychotropic drugs, water quality, family violence, 
obesity, teenage morbidity, and suicide, the aging population, the prioritization of early childhood education, reduction of agricultural greenhouse gases, balancing economic growth and environmental sustainability. For Carrazzo, PNS can be framed in terms of a call for the democratization of expertise and as a reaction against long-term trends of scientization and scientization of politics. Otherwise, the tendency towards assigning the experts a critical role in policymaking while marginalizing lay people. Uh, for Mike Hume, that's how you pronounce his name. Mike Hume. Mike Hume. Climate change seems falls into the category of issues which are best dealt within the context of PNS. Disputes in post-normal science focus as often on the process of science. Who gets funded? Who evaluates quality? Who has the ear of policy? It's recently been an increased reference to post-normal science. One criticism of post-normal science is offered by Wayne Gart for whom post-normal science does not introduce a new epistemology, but retraces earlier debates linked to the so-called finalization thesis. Thank you to everyone for watching my video, and I hope that it was easier to watch than the last one. I hope that it was easier to watch than the last one, and that you learned something about post-normal science. Share what you learned today with somebody else. Thank you so much.